Okay, good morning everyone. Shalom Aleichem, Bruch Ma'abayim. We have a very uh, amazing topics to discuss this morning. And uh, I want to thank uh, Rabbi Eli Schwartz for sponsoring today's breakfast um, in honor of his new lo- uh, relocation to the five towns from Brooklyn. Hashem Shemim Avarichim and his new bias. You should have only Shafa Bracha Vatzlacha, good health, and Yimali Hashem Komashas Liba the Toiva. We want to wish a special Mazel Tov. Now it's before Tisha B'av and we're talking about anyone who lives in Chutz La'aretz, it's like he has no God. The Gemara says that. But yesterday we learned that's only if you're not anticipating the coming of the Geula. So my dear neighbor, I want to wish him a special Mazel Tov. Dr. Menachem Fuchs just officially made Aliyah. He is a resident of Eretz Yisrael. Even though right now he's staying with us, but he has a Makayim, and he's officially a Ben Tzion. He's officially belongs to Eretz Yisrael. And it's a very big zchus for his mishpacha. It's a zchus for us that we have such a Yid who has aspirations and he has officially made himself connected to Eretz Yisrael. It should be zchus for our whole kehila that we should all be connected to our Seinu Akdosha. Okay. Simen Taf Kuf Nunhe. Dine Tfilin Betzitzis on Tishbav. It's very interesting. We know the halacha is that we don't wear tzitzis and tefillin, at least talis gadol on Tishbav. The Mechaber says the minog is that we don't wear tefillin on Tishbav and we don't wear a talis, but we do wear talis katan without a bracha. And mincha, we put on tzitzis, we put on tefillin, and we're mavarach. What's the reason we don't wear talis and tefillin on Tishbav morning? Mr. Brewer brings the medrash because the medrash says, Bitsa imrasai. Literally, Hashem carried out his plan, but it could also mean he tore Imrasa his royal garment. Biza porfira delay. He tore his garment. That's the talis. And then the pasuk says, Hishlech mishamayim eretz tiferes Yisrael. He threw from heaven the glory of Klal Yisrael, which is the tefillin. So therefore, we do not wear tefillin in the morning. Okay, so that's the reason we don't wear tefillin in the morning. So look in the Shana Lachais. Tishabav, Chayiv B'Tfillin. Tishabav, you're Chayiv and Tfillin. It's not like Talmud Torah. You're inherently Chayiv, but V'noyeg in Shaloy Laniach B'Shachris Tfillin. We're Noyeg not to wear Tfillin by Shachris, the Veloy Talis, Elo Loiv Shim Talis Katan Tachas Begadim, Veloy Bracha. We wear a Talis Katan under the garment without a Bracha. The million dollar question is, why don't we make a bracha on the Taos Katan? Normally, what's the reason we don't make a bracha on the Taos Katan? Because we patter with the Taos Gadol. By the way, you all know that if you're married, you're a big boy, you don't make a talis, you don't make a bracha on your Taos Katan anymore. Right? We, we went through this. We do not make a bracha on Taos Katan. Even though when you're three years old and you had your, your little pair of, ta- of uh, tzitzis, maybe with you know, a superhero on it, whatever they got for you, some ridiculous picture, you, did, you made a bracha. Once you get married, you do not make a bracha on Talis Katan. But the main reason is because the Talis Gadol patters it. So the question is, but Tisha B'Av morning, where you're not putting on a Talis Gadol, why don't you make a bracha on Talis Katan? So now, what's interesting is, says the Shana Lachas, Vim Pashtai Belayla, some people sleep in a Talis Katan. In America, most people are not sleeping in a Talis Katan. Then Pasha if you took off your Talis Katan, Yesh Oimrim She Tzarech Levarech Ala Some say you do have to make a bracha even Tisha B'Av morning. This is so, that's interesting that uh, the Mishabur brings down that Yesh Oimrim, that you have to make a bracha on a Talis Katan if you took it off at night. Therefore, therefore, What's interesting, if you look on uh, your sheet, let's see, on the, on the number three, this is uh, page 17 in the back of the Dershu, Rav Shoma Zalman would advise that when you go to sleep Tisha B'Av night, to sleep in your Talis Katan. This way, you don't have a Shaila in the morning. Now, you say, that's not going to be very comfortable, you know. Now I have to sleep with only one pillow. We're going to, right, you're supposed to be, afflict yourself with your sleep. If you usually sleep with two pillows, you sleep with one pillow. Some people put a stone under, under their pillow. Now what? And now I have to sleep in tzitzis? I'm not going to be able to sleep. There, I, I just thought of another itza. You know, some people, Shabbos day, 
if they take a nap, if you're going to take off your tzitzis, so what do you do when you wake up? Do you have to make another bracha a shayla? So a way out of it is, you could take off the tzitzis, but sort of drape it over your blanket. As long as it's on the cover, it's considered like you're not mesech das on the talis, and you don't have to make another bracha. So if you don't want to sleep in the tzitzis, but if you keep it on your bed, then l'chayro you would not have to make a bracha in the morning. But by the way, there's another reason why the minog is not to make a bracha on Taos Katan. And that is because very often the Taos Katan is not kosher. This is the Mishabura brings down in general. A reason why the minog is not to make a bracha on Taos Katan. Because you know that Spider-Man tzitzis you got when you're three years old? There are guys who are still wearing it when they get married. It, it wasn't kosher when you got it originally, and it's still not kosher. No, but, but all kidding aside, for a Taos Katan to be kosher, it has to cover Roy Shoi Verubai. It has to be a minimum shear. Minimum, minimum has to be 18 inches. I, why, why grown men, they wear suits that are oversized, but they're wearing tzitzis that go up to here? That I don't know. I can't explain what the, why people like. Stam, you should try, everybody should try to make sure their taos katan is kosher, because every moment you wear it, your mekayim a mitzvah, it should be minimum 18 inches, maybe 22 inches. Even 22 inches is not going to, a guy who's 5'10", uh, 5'11", 22 inches is going to be skimpy. Get 24 inches, and this way your yoytzei taos katan according to everybody. But in any event, there's a shayla, do you make a, a bracha tishvav morning? If you took off your talis, safik brachas lahakel, meaning if you didn't sleep in your tzitzis, don't make a bracha tishvav morning. If you slept in the tzitzis, you get, around, you get out of all uh, issues. Fine. The shayla lachas continues. V'yizohar shaloi yikra ata parshios krishma. This is very interesting. I'm um, sorry, I skipped the line. Uva mincha manichan tzitzis u tefillin, umavarchalim. Mincha, we put on talis and tefillin, and you make a bracha. Now what about somebody who wears Rabbeinu Tam tefillin, so you put on by mincha tam. Varagal aniach tefillin shal Rabbeinu Tam, yaniach gamata. Now many people, they like to say Shema in their tefillin. It's proper to say Shema in the tefillin. So for example, let's say this morning, so we made the Graz Man Kriyashma. The Magen Avram Zman Kriyashma was something like 844. So let's say you want to be Mekayim the Magen Avram. So you put on your tefillin, you say Kriyashma. On Tisha B'av, when you put on your tefillin, Mincha time, are you allowed to say Shema in them? It's Asr. It's Asr to say Shema. Why? Why are you saying Shema? It's after the Zman. Oh, it's just learning? You're not allowed to learn on Tisha B'av. You cannot even do a simple act of learning as simple as saying the Pesukim of Kriyashma. It is prohibited to say Shema in the Tefillin on Tisha B'av. What about if you say uh, the Dalet Parshish? Many people say Dalet Parshish in Tefillin every morning. They say Kadesh Vahaya. Can't do it on Tisha B'av. V'chein Parshish Kadesh. Dehaloi ke'es hurak ke'koyre b'toyra. At such a time, you're all, it's like you're being koyre b'toyra. The Talmud Torah Asur Kol Yom. You're not to learn the whole day. The Chain Kol Hoinuim Asur Kol Yom. The all the afflictions of Tishav are Asur the whole day. Verak v'Tvil and v'Tzitzis, just Tvil and Tzitzis, which is a minog not to wear it. So then we wear it after Chatzos. Menichin Lachar Chatzos. So last night I saw a really interesting question. What if somebody is not fasting on Tishav? There are many people they don't fast Tishav. Let's say they have, they have a choyli, they have some type of illness, they can't fast on Tisha B'av. The doctor says, look, you can fast Yom Kippur, you can't fast Tisha B'av. Someone who's sick doesn't fast Tisha B'av. So he's going to eat. You're allowed to eat before you put on tefillin? Does someone who needs to eat on Tisha B'av have to put on tefillin Tisha B'av morning? Isn't that an interesting question? I never thought of it. If someone who's not fasting on Tisha B'av, should he eat Look in the Dershu, look at number two. Ulainyan Khoila Shaikal Batishabab. Hayim Sarkla Niach Tfilin Khaidam Shayochal Achilas Keva. He's gonna be eating a breakfast. Does he have to put on Tfilin? Kamai Kala Machuy Vimitsva Sase Sha Asar Lechal Khaidam Shikam is a mitzvah. Anytime you're chaiv in a mitzvah sase, you're now to eat before you're makaim the mitzvah. So he brings this as the suffix of Shao Sachuvas, his oiros chuva. He brings the Maram Shik, who says that a Choyla should do what everyone else does on Tisha B'Av. 
which sounds like he should not put on tefillin. He brings from Shal Shushiva Zichor and Yehuda that Adaraba, someone who eats, he is, he has, there's more of a reason for him not to put on tefillin before he eats. Because if he's going to eat, then he's going to totally forget the korban. So at least by not wearing tefillin, he'll have some memory of the korban. Is that a halachic svara? I mean, how is he allowed to eat if he doesn't put on tefillin? Rabbi Yashiv agrees though. Rabbi Yashiv says a different reason. He says, on Tisha B'av, we're putter from the mitzvah of tefillin until mincha time. I want to, I want to, uh, what about the following case? I know people are going to Eretz Yisrael on Tisha B'av. Right? People go after Chatzah. I know someone who's flying 10.30 a.m. So he's flying 10.30 a.m. Well, one thing he gains is he has to fast like four less hours. You know? So people have a pastime. If you fly on fast days, you... you right? right? Even more than, even more than four hours. Less? Four hours less? More than, yeah. In other words, you, you, you save more than four hours? Right. When's the date, the date line you hit? No, 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 no date line when you fly to Eretz Yisrael. It's just basically you're flying uh, Eretz Yisrael seven hours ahead. So every hour you, you um, fly, it's enough, yeah, may, maybe a little bit more than four hours. So the question is, what's he, what's he supposed to do? Should he wear tefillin in the morning? If he waits until after Mincha, he might not have time. Anyway, Rabbi Yashiv says an interesting thing. Rabbi Yashiv says it's not just that there's a hanhaga that we delay wearing tefillin until after mincha because we say, we are categorically exempt from the mitzvah of tefillin until mincha time. Right now there's no chi of tefillin, so he's allowed to eat. Rabbi Shlomo Zaman also says he does um, not wear tefillin. But, uh, but here's the zach. If he's eating lunch, he can't eat lunch before tefillin, because once chatzos comes, he's chayiv in tefillin. So this guy should really daven mincha gedoyla. A guy who's going to be eating should daven mincha gedoyla. Comes the shevet alevi, and he says no. He has to wear tefillin. So what does he do if the guy's davening in shul? No, he can't put on tefillin publicly in shul. He davens shachris in shul. He goes home. He puts, uh, he says kriyashma and tefillin, and then he can eat. Now it's interesting, he says, what do you mean put on tefillin and say Shema? It's after the Zman Kriya Shema. You're not allowed to say Shema. The Sheva Levi says he disagrees with the Mishabura. He holds that you are allowed to say Shema. Okay. Now here's another interesting question. In, our, in the Shul here we daven Mincha Kitana. Yeah, we daven the late Mincha. What do you do Tishbav Day? Don't tell me. Mestama, you learn, first you learn Eicha. Then you learn the third parak of Ma'id Katan, right? Because um, what else are you allowed to do? All the movies, they're not meant for Tisha B'av, I don't think. I mean, how could you watch them on Tisha B'av? They're not, what do they have to do with Tisha B'av? No, I don't know. I'm not getting into that right now. But, and you want to lie down, right? Uh, you have a headache a little bit. Maybe you want to lie down. But you didn't put on tefillin yet. Are you allowed to sleep before you put on tefillin by Mincha? So he brings Misha writes Alisha and Kaidam Tfilas Mincha, someone who wants to sleep before Mincha. So he brings from Rabbi Yo Dushnitzer that if you didn't put on Tfilin yet, you can't go to sleep. And he's not so sure that if you make a Shaymer, it's going to help. However, Rabbi Yashif says, you're allowed to go to sleep. Why? Because if there's no Chiv to do a mitzvah, there's no Isser to eat and to sleep. Lechara, that means, no, that you're going to sleep before this man, Mincha. But he brings that another version of Rabbi Yashiv is Rabbi Yashiv said, you're allowed to go to sleep even once this man, Mincha, comes because there are Rishonim that hold that there is no Chiyav on Tefillin on Tisha B'av. We don't hold that way. We hold there's a Chiyav, but there's a minute to do it later. There are Rishonim that say that that there's no mitzvah of tefillin on Tisha B'av. Therefore, you could rely on those shittas to be able to go to sleep 
at least so, make sure you set an alarm, this way you wake up and you don't wake up the next day. Um, okay, so, the, so uh, there is a version of Rabbi Yashiv that you'd be allowed to go to sleep based on the idea that there is no mitzvah of tefillin on Tisha B'Av. Okay, let's see Sif Bays in the uh, Shaina Lachais. But yeah. this is a pluralized photo from Fulham. person uh, fasting, doesn't feel well, so maybe he's potter, so this way it would be... Again, if the reason he doesn't feel well is he has an ail a stomach ailment, so he can't put on Tefillin either. No, but if the, let's say the reason he's not, he's fasting is, uh, he, the let's say the reason he's not fasting is he has a uh, kidney failure, so he has to drink, right? But that doesn't affect wearing Tefillin. Okay, Sif Beis. Yesh adam lehitztayer be'inyan mishkavai belel tishabav. She'im ragel be'beis karim. If you usually sleep with two pillows, lo yishkav kiyam echad. Only sleep with one. V'yesh noyagin lahasim even tachas merasha sam. There's a minhag to put a stone under your head. You ever hear that minhag? To put a stone under your head. I want to read to you an amazing line in the Chida. The Chida, when he talks about sleeping on Tishabav, if I could find this, says the Holy Chida, Yitztayer ma'oid b'meshkavai, v'yikach me'avne ha'makoim, v'yosei merashoisav. The reason we put a stone is not to pain ourselves, because we have a tradition that when Hashem showed Yaakov Avinu the nevuah of the ladder, it was Leil Tishabav. And when he saw the ladder, he had a stone under his head. So to commemorate that, there's a minhag. Now, if anybody needs stones, they're available, we could, we could supply. I have a lot of stones in my backyard. If anybody needs an extra stone, put it under your head. V'yesh noyagim lishkav muta ala aretz. Some people have a minhag to lay stretched out on the, on the floor. Umesim even tachas roishai. Basically, like to sleep half off the bed. If you haven't mastered how to do that, I don't know if uh, that's the best time to start with that. Start with the one pillow. If you want to put a pebble, put a pebble. The Adam Chalosh, if somebody's weak, Vachain Ubarais, or a pregnant woman, in Chavos Elu, they don't have to pain themselves with um, their sleep. Vishanu Alamitos, they should sleep on a regular bed. Fine. Gimel. Yemayi Adam Echvoid Vanasa Batishba. A person should minimize. His honor and his pleasure on Tisha B'Av. B'chol ma'da'asha efshar. So if you smoke, v'asar la'ashen titoin shekoyrin reicheren afilu b'davut samais v'koshim b'tisha B'Av. It's asar to smoke on Tisha B'Av. Obviously we're talking about smoke without any nicotine or out any chemicals. We're talking about just going into a... Um, a cold room and going, whew, even that you're not allowed to do. Because other kinds of smoke, a stam you're not allowed to do because you're not allowed to commit suicide. You know that halacha, it's, not, it's prohibited to commit suicide. But you, you know, don't do things that are technically not from the five inuyim that give you pleasure. But v'yesh makilin, there are those who are lenient regarding this. Somebody who's already addicted to committing suicide. Yesh lahakal achar chatzais b'tzina they could be lenient to smoke after chatzos in their house, in their house. Okay, so that's simon tav kuf nun hey. Can we do one more? I want to do one more simon with you.